We are in the year of ultralight frames. These are two of my current racing quads. These are both Boss frames. This is the Boss XL, and it's running these uh, DYS motors and the Sam Gook 2600 kV. If you're going to run these, don't run two blade props. If you're used to power, you won't have it. These three blade props make it fly completely different. It's way better with three blade props. I don't know that they're really running 2600, but. Anyway, with three blade props, it's still a contender. This one's running the cheaper motors. These are Racer Star 2306S motors, and these actually perform better and stronger than I can and then my piloting skills. So I've been real happy with this. Anyway, today we're looking at another frame. This is a diatone frame. This is their version of the ultralight frame. Comes in this nice sealed package, airtight, so your carbon fiber doesn't spoil in the in the ride over from China. Also, it comes with this Ditone anti-fake sticker up here, so you know you're getting a real deal. Not that I've seen a lot of people clone Ditone frames, but this is the, the 2008 GT R5 SX frame. And this is actually the 230 millimeter frame. So, we'll open this up, take a look, and get that nice, fresh Ditone smell. <laughs> Fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. This is something I wasn't expecting. These straps are cloth. There's a real heavy duty, duty kind of canvas cloth to them. They're 20 millimeters long and they have a huge metal ring over here. But anyway, in addition to that, we got some zip ties, spacers, screws, screws, some nylon spacers. These are for uh, actually holding the uh, run cam micro into place. Some more uh, not, not, uh, lock nuts, more tiny screws, screws, more screws, and some nylon nuts. But anyway, I want to get to this part. On here, it has these huge holes here. And this is the main plate. It has these huge holes, and I would imagine these are for holding your uh, antenna if you wanted to put it out here, which I guess would be okay. It has the, you can just do the center hole, or you can use the two side ones and screw it onto the plate itself. And this is, looks like it's about like, Two millimeters thick, maybe three millimeters thick. Anyway, here's the arms. Also, they are cut out. They can looks like they can do 1807 motors if you use the smaller size screws there. But I can also use the uh, 2205 kind of size. And uh, these edges are cut and uh, cut perfectly, and it feels real smooth. And the edges are uh, the corners have been rounded off to help, I guess, give it a more polished look. Kudos to Diatone for doing that. Up here it does say 5x5, five five, whatever whatever that means, I'm not really sure, but it says 5x5. Five five. And if you notice, the holes aren't exactly lined up straight, and that might allow you to have a different arm configuration. We'll find out in a few minutes. So here it is mostly assembled. It has longer screws that go through the bottom plate, the arm, and up into the spacers, and then a little bit shorter ones that go up into the lock nuts here. Now one thing on this frame that's very nice is it has the 30x30, 30 30, or actually they're 30.5x30.5, flyboard holes and then it has the 20 by 20 flyboard holes inside there and that just gives you a few more options like if you have an HGLRC stack then you can use it right into the 20 by 20 holes instead of the 30.5 by 30.5 holes now eventually I think we're going to start seeing more and more frames come with a 20 point a 20 by 20 hole pattern only and we won't even have the 30 by 30 now the nice thing about the 30 by 30 is it does make the uh, whole frame a little bit wider which gives a little bit more strength, but I think the 20 by 20 is eventually going to take over. And again, you can also see here how the flight board is kind of pushed back to the rear of this uh, frame, and that allows more room up in the front for your video cam or your um, yeah your camera to sit back a little bit inside the frame and get a little bit more protection from the frame instead of sticking outside of it. This frame also includes some 25 millimeter nylon screws, and the nice thing about having the nylon screws is you can run them up through the bottom like this and put all your stack stuff on top of here. Now the one thing I started doing is I started getting rid of the nylon spacers. I have the male and female side to them and I have a whole bunch of 25 millimeter uh, regular screws, steel screws, that I've been using for my flight boards and for my ESDs, everything in here in the stack. And the reason is because I've been having a lot of times where I crash and the sheer force will move all the stuff inside and it'll snap these nylon spacers. So even though this comes with the nylon uh, screws here. I would actually recommend you pull those out and put in some 
uh, steel screws and that way you won't have any problem now it, well you shouldn't have any problem with a breaking and a crash anyway now these are 25 millimeters these um, spacers are 20 but they're short enough that they fit underneath the top plate without any issue so as long as you keep stuff down below the top of these screw holes you should be fine another thing I started doing is I bought a whole bunch of these little nylon nuts and I used them as spacers that way I can adjust the height between each frame you know to that resolution whatever is like two or three millimeters and now I can stack them up on top of each other or just even have one now if you're gonna run your uh, the included nylon straps through here you're gonna need more than one more than one because it's not gonna fit under there actually wouldn't fit through there at all if you do the 20 by 20 if you did a 30 by 30 this would fit through but you just have to be aware that if you have a 20 by 20 stack most of your battery straps are going to have a hard time fitting through. Now you still will be able to run it up through here, but when you do this, now look, you're kind of interfering with the um, antenna mount holes. So I don't think that was <laughs> real well thought out. Maybe they only thought you'd have one battery strap hold it on, but if you wanted to have two, you're not going to be able to. There's not enough room back here to run a full size strap, at least the ones that they included, back here and up here. So the only place it's going to be all fit through is up here. Unless, of course, you're using a little bit bigger stack. But, you know, whatever you get, hopefully it'll fit. And you'll have at least one battery stuff that you can run at a time. In true diatone fashion, you get extras of everything when it comes to these little accessories. These are not 3D printed camera mounts. They're actually, look like they're, you know, poured plastic or molded plastic. And they just slip on there and they got a little space inside there to help hold them on a little bit then you should be able to fit your run cam inside there and if you lose one of these you got two extra ones that are included with it also included are these four little small screws and they are for your run cam they should your run cam micro they should be long enough to fit through here and actually get enough grip inside your camera to keep it in place up here on the top plate it needs four screws to hold these down now it does have these 12 millimeter screws but they're a little bit long and they probably interfere with the ones coming off the bottom but it also has a lot of these extra nine millimeter screws and so they fit in here just fine and they, they go way down into the spacer which provides a lot of threads to help hold the top plate down. Now I have had where it came with like six millimeter screws and they barely had enough threads to even get in here and hold the top plate down. Then in a crash you'll actually bend the spacer inside there like the end of the spacer because there's not enough threads going down into it to hold it tight. So anyway it has a, those, I use the, the nine millimeter ones and I think it'll be fine. Now, it feels like in true diatone fashion, they give you extras of everything, and it makes you wonder if you even put it together right. These are all extra 12 millimeter screws. It has these little short screws, I guess, if you wanted to put these up in the top plate, they would go through fine, but you don't have much thread, you know, going into the spacer itself, but you would cut down on the weight a little bit. It also comes with all these zip ties, and comes with a whole bunch of screws, which these are, I would assume, are for your motors because there's a lot of them in here and you know and that way they, I guess they want to make sure that you use the right length of spacers or right length of screws for the arms that they gave you on this. Now it also had a rubber piece that goes on the bottom which this makes me think that for sure they wanted you to run the battery strap down through between the flight board posts and they give you the four holes here cut out for the 20 by 20 and then the, the other holes are just kind of rounded out around them. And it had a little piece of clear plastic on there, and you peel it off, and this is actually pretty good, pretty good. It's, it's sticky enough that it's going to help hold that battery in place. It's not sticky, it's just more grippy to help hold the battery onto the quad. But like I said, with, it, with these straps they gave you, they're actually too wide to fit through there. So you're going to have to get a different spacer or a different size strap that's a little bit more narrow, or you're going to have to use the 30 by 30 flight board so you can actually run with the straps that they gave you. Now if you did have the second strap up here, you're not going to have much uh, rubber stuff up here in the front. They could have made it just go ahead and stretch out a little bit further, but that would have made, you know, more material, more cost for them. They probably didn't want to do that. So here's the frame fully assembled. Here's the included battery strap. And, and look at this. This thing by itself weighs 11 grams. My goodness. So here's the frame with the 3D printed, well not 3D printed, the, the camera holders and the nylon screws in there. They don't hardly add any weight, but 66.5 grams. So add on another 11 if you want to use this battery strap. That makes it into a pretty heavy quad. Let's get some measurements off this frame. The top plate comes in about 2 millimeters. The bottom plate comes in about 
three millimeters and the arms are four millimeters, about 10 millimeters wide. Space inside the frame is about 24 millimeters. The top plate's about 30 millimeters wide. The bottom plate is about 35 millimeters wide and here in the thinnest part. The camera mount's about 19 millimeters wide, which is the same as the Micro Run Cam Eagle. The website called this a 230 frame. This comes in closer to about 234. Side to side, the motors are about 145. Front to back, they come in about 183 millimeters. So these frames here are pretty good competition for this one. Now this angle frame, it's actually the diatone's actually a little bit longer than that. And if you line up the one, it's a little bit wider than the angle frame. So, but that's kind of be expected. This is a 230, this is a 220. Here's the boss frame, and if we look at it from the side to side, they're about the same. The diatome may be just a hair wider, but on the lengthwise, the diatone is actually a lot longer than the uh, Boss XL frame. So, this is going to be the Diatone XXL. <laughs> so here's a 5 inch prop, and if I put this up here, you can see it clears the frame no problem at all. It doesn't even go anywhere near the halfway mark here, so 5-inch props should be fine. This is a 6-inch prop. A 6-inch prop can clear the frame just fine. It has enough room, it should be able to spin it. The problem is with the arms in this configuration, if you put the other prop on the other side, you're going to be having a lot of smacking going on between your props, and that means that you'll probably crash. So what if you move the arm the other way? Could a 6-inch prop fit then? Well, here it is, it's flipping the other way, and sure enough, look, now it doesn't go anywhere near crossing the middle. Well, there we go. So you should be able to run six inch prop, right? Well, the problem is if you run the other one the same way, then you have this prop sitting here, and this six inch prop sitting here, and then they're smacking from front to back. So can you run six inch props on this frame? No. So this is the Diatone 2008 GTR5, the 230 millimeter stretched X version. If you're interested in this, I'll have links down in the description. Now, is this going to replace my boss frame? Well, probably not. This one has the five millimeter thick arms, so they're a little bit thicker. They are a little bit thinner, and the Diatone tries to make up for that a little bit by having a little bit wider arms than normal, so or a little bit wider arms than the boss frame anyway. So I think this would be okay. You don't want to put heavy motors out here on this because during a crash, it's going to be a lot of mass that's going to be trying to snap these arms. Let's see if we can bend this. Yeah, you can see a little bit of bending in there. Let's see if I can do it a little better. There we go. A little bit of bending in there, but nothing, nothing too extreme. You're going to have a little bit of bending, but the, if you have heavier motors on this, like I was saying, it's going to have more of a chance to snap the arms than if you have little light motors. But the problem with little light motors are there aren't a lot of them that have a high output of power. So you kind of got to find a happy medium. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, oh, also one more thing. I'm also not real keen on these little spacers out here for your antenna holders. I would assume that's what they're for, but I'm not a real big fan of that. I think it just looks kind of interesting. I guess if you ran your antenna up through there or had your antenna sticking up, it would be better to have it mounted to the bottom plate rather than the top plate. But, you know, it's up on the front, so kind of interesting. Anyway, it shouldn't be in the way of the props either. But anyway, if you do have any questions about this, you want to know anything else about it that you think I might know or just want to ask me some other questions, let me know down in the comments, and I will try to answer your questions as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away.